air and water for life. Introduction Warm air rises up because it is lighter than cold air. When air is heated, the particles of hot air become further apart from each other. They move faster than particles of cold air. Air expands on heating. When air is cooled, it contracts particles of cold air, come nearer to one another and take up less space. Heating air. Take a bottle fitted with a rubber stopper. Make a hole in the stopper so that a glass tube just fits into it. Put the glass tube through the stopper. Trap a pellet of ink or colored water in the glass tube. Now, cork the bottle with the stopper fitted with the tube. Hold the bottle with both hands. After a while, watch the movement of the pellet of ink. The activity shows that air expands when heated. The air inside the bottle was warmed up by the heat of the hands. This heat made the air expand. The expanding air pushed the pellet of ink up. When the hands were removed, the air cooled again and contracted. The pressure of air outside then pushed the pellet of ink Take a balloon, press it so that it is flat and there is no air inside it. Tie the mouth of the balloon to that of an empty bottle with the help of a rubber band so that no air can escape. Now, boil some water and place the bottle in the boiling water. The balloon expands due to the presence of heated air inside it. Dust and smoke The burning of fuel also produces smoke. Smoke contains a few gases and fine dust particles and is often harmful. That is why you see long chimneys in factories. This takes the harmful smoke and gases away from our noses but brings it closer to the birds flying up in the sky. Dust particles are always present in air. Experiment Find a sunny room in your school or home. Close all the doors and windows with curtains pulled down to make the room dark. Now, open the door or a window facing the sun just a little in such a way that it allows sunlight to enter the room only through a slit. Look carefully at the incoming beam of sunlight. Do you see tiny shining particles moving in the beam of sunlight? What are these particles? During cold winters, you might have observed similar beam of sunlight filtered through the trees in which dust particles appear to dance merrily around. This shows that air also contains dust particles. The presence of dust particles in air arises from time to time and from place to place. We inhale air when we breathe through our nostrils. Fine hair and mucus are present inside the nose to prevent dust particles from getting into the respiratory system. Composition of air We see that air contains mostly nitrogen and oxygen. In fact, these two gases together make up 99% of the air. The remaining 1% is constituted by carbon dioxide and a few other gases, water vapor and dust particles. Water as a natural resource Water is the most abundant substance on the earth. It fills the seas, rivers, lakes, which cover more than three-fourths of the Earth's surface. It also exists as snow and ice on mountains. Water is also found within the crust of the Earth. In the atmosphere, water is present in huge quantities as vapors or clouds. Water is a natural resource so long as man does not disrupt the water cycle. Different states of water. Water exists in all the three states solids, liquids and gases at different temperatures below 0 degrees centigrade as ice in a solid state between 0 degrees centigrade and 100 degrees centigrade as liquid and gaseous state 
above 100 degrees centigrade as steam in a gaseous state. The three states of water are interchangeable. Water can be changed from one form to another. Ice, solid, on heating changes to water, liquid, and water, liquid, on heating changes to steam, gas. Can this process be reversed? Yes, if we cool steam, that is gas, we get water, that is liquid. If water, which is liquid, is kept in a freezer, it changes into ice, which is a solid. The above observation shows that water can exist in all the three states and a change in the state can be brought about by changing the temperature or pressure. Disappearing trick of water Take two similar plates. Place one of the plates in sunlight and keep the other under shade. Now, pour equal amount of water in each of the plates. You can use a cap of a bottle to measure water. Make sure that water does not spill over. Observe the two plates after every 15 minutes. Does the water seem to disappear? From which plate does it disappear first? What is the source of heat for this evaporation? During the daytime, sunlight falls on the water in oceans, rivers, lakes and ponds. The fields and other land areas also receive sunlight. As a result, water from all these places continuously changes into vapour. However, the salts dissolved in the water are left behind. Water cycle The constant circulation of water is known as water cycle. Water is evaporating continuously from the surface of seas, rivers, lakes, oceans and from the green plants on land to the atmosphere due to the heat of the sun. The water vapour rises up. The air higher up in the atmosphere is cooler. This air cools the water vapour and it condenses to form small drops of water on dust particles forming clouds. As the clouds cool down, these water drops become bigger and fall down as rain. Rainwater enters the seas, rivers, lakes, ponds and streams and evaporates again. Thus, circulation of water from the earth's surface to the atmosphere and back to the earth is called the water cycle. Water solvent. Gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, ammonia are also soluble in water. Since water dissolves almost every common substance in it, to some extent, Water is considered to be a universal solvent. Solutions made in water are termed as aqueous solution. Solution is a mixture of solute and solvent. The substance which is dissolved to make a solution is solvent. Water evaporates faster when it is windy. Take water in equal quantity in two saucers of the same size. Keep one saucer under a fan and the other away from it where there is no wind. Observe both saucers every 15 minutes. The water evaporates faster in the saucer under the fan. Water evaporates faster when the exposed surface is large. Take two shirts of the same size and of the same cloth. Wet them in water. Fold one of the shirts to make its area smaller. Open out the other shirt. Allow them to dry. Water evaporates faster from the one which is big and has large surface area. Condensation Conversion of water vapour into water is called condensation. Cooling transforms water vapour into droplets of water. Take a kettle filled with water and keep it on fire. Let the water boil. When the steam comes out, allow it to strike the bottom of a pan filled with ice-cold water. You will observe that water droplets are formed on the bottom of the pan. This process is called condensation. Water vapour condenses in different ways. Condensation effects Dew When water vapour condenses on cold object, dew is formed. Frost When the objects are extremely cold, frost may be formed by water vapour. When nights are very cold, the ground temperature falls below 0 degrees centigrade. The water on the ground freezes. This is called frost. 
fog. When water vapor condenses on dust particles in the air, it forms clouds or fog. A fog is really a low cloud close to the ground. Snow When water vapor freezes in the air, it forms crystals of ice called snow. If the cold in a layer of the atmosphere is so intense that it freezes the minute particles before they collect into raindrops, snowfall takes place. Clouds Clouds are formed when water vapor in the air is cooled and condensed as part of the water cycle. Clouds consist of billions of tiny water droplets and even ice crystals floating in the sky and appears in a variety of shapes and sizes depending on how and where they were formed. Air rises for three main reasons. Sunshine Heat from the sun or warm ground warms the air and makes it lighter. It therefore rises into the sky. The terrain Air may rise as it is forced upwards due to changes in the terrain, that is, the landscape. This often occurs when wind blows air either over mountains or over cliffs onto land from the sea. A front Air can also rise at a weather front. At cold fronts, cold air is pushed under warm air, forcing it upward and at a warm front, warm moist air is forced up and over the cold air. Formation of clouds Take a glass half filled with water. Wipe the glass from the outside with a clean piece of cloth. Add some ice into the water. Wait for one or two minutes. Observe the changes that take place on the outer surface of the glass. From where do water droplets appear on the outer side of the glass? Clouds are formed when air containing water vapor is cooled below a critical temperature called the dew point and the resulting moisture condenses into droplets on microscopic dust particles, condensation nuclei, in the atmosphere. The air is normally cooled by expansion during its upward movement. Upward flow of air in the atmosphere may be caused by convection resulting from intense solar heating of the ground by a cold wedge of air, cold front, near the ground causing a mass of warm air to be forced aloft or by a mountain range at an angle to the wind. Clouds are occasionally produced by a reduction of pressure aloft or by the mixing of warmer and cooler air currents. Formation of rain Warm air turns the water from rivers, lakes and oceans into water vapor that rises into the air. The water vapor forms clouds, which contains small drops of water or ice crystals, depending on how high the cloud is and how cold it is. As clouds rise higher and higher, the air gets colder and colder. When the water vapor in the cloud becomes too heavy, it falls back to the ground as rain or snow. When a cloud grows, water vapor in the air gradually condenses to form lots of more tiny droplets. When a cloud shrinks, many droplets are completely evaporating to become invisible water vapor. For rain to happen, the weather condition inside the clouds and surrounding them has to cause the droplets to grow. Some droplets will grow by colliding and combining with each other. Some droplets will grow by acquiring more and more water vapor from the air. Some will do both. Most of the droplets in the clouds grow at the same time. The droplets do not all grow at the same rate either. Some grow faster than others. As soon as they get big enough, they start to fall out of the cloud. Eventually, however, they get too big to stay up in the air, so they fall all the way to the ground.